All right, let's dive into Google Cloud Data Engineering today. Sounds good. We've got a whole bunch of practice questions and explanations mm -hmm. uh, from the Associate Data Practitioner exam. Okay. We're going to like pull out the best knowledge nuggets from these. Yeah, it's like we're reverse engineering the exam, right? Yeah. To understand not just how to pass it, but like what does it really take to be a data practitioner, you know? Yeah, and like in this day and age, who isn't working with data in some way? True that. So let's kick things off with uh, with a scenario from question one here. Okay. Imagine a sales team. You know, they really need to access this sensitive transaction data. Mm -hmm. But there's a catch. They should only see the data from their specific region. Right. What's the best way to keep things secure but still accessible? You know. Well, this is where row-level security comes in, or RLS. Okay. Um, think of it like a really, really good security guard for your database. Uh, so it's yeah. going to make sure that each user only sees the data that's relevant to their role, their region. Hmm. And this is not only crucial for protecting that sensitive information, but also for, you know, complying with all those data privacy regulations. Right, GDPR and all that. Exactly. So it's not just about locking things down. It's about, like, empowering people with the right data. Yeah while still minimizing the risks. Absolutely. All right, let's switch gears a little bit to question two here. Okay. So imagine these same sales teams, they rely on these dashboards that are fueled by real-time data. Right. But the dashboards are so slow. I hate that. They're slower than a sloth in a hammock. Yeah. What do we do to speed things up when like every second counts? Yeah, well, in that case, we could turn to the elegance of materialized views. Materialized views, okay. Yeah, so think of like a massive company-wide report that takes hours to generate. Okay. And instead of running those complex queries every time someone wants to see it, right. we pre-compute the results and store them in a materialized view. So it's like having a ready-to-go summary already done. Yeah. The instead of having to like crunch all the numbers from scratch every single time. Exactly, and the beauty is they stay fresh. Okay. They automatically update as the underlying data changes. So we get the speed and the accuracy. You got it. Now, this next scenario from question three gets into some serious territory here. Okay. What happens when an employee leaves the company and we need to make sure that any personal data is completely unreadable? Right. Now, data privacy laws are no joke. Especially with personal information. No kidding. So this is where customer managed encryption keys or CMEKs become our best friend. CME guys. Okay. Yeah, think of it like this. You hold the master key to a vault where the data is stored. Mm. If an employee leaves you, delete the key and poof. Gone. The data is inaccessible, even if someone got their hands on it somehow. Wow, that's powerful. It is. Speaking of control, question four kind of throws us a curveball here. Right. Disaster recovery. Mm -hmm. Imagine your data is stored safely in cloud storage, but then an entire zone goes offline. Like a data apocalypse. What can we do to safeguard against that kind of catastrophic failure? Yeah, so multi-region storage is our solution here. Okay. So picture your data being mirrored in multiple locations, oh. kind of like having backup generators in different regions. Got it. If one location goes down, the others are still running, so you've got continuous data access. That's a relief. I know, right? But what if it's not a massive outage? What if it's more like a constant trickle of small data files that need to get into BigQuery instantly. Okay. That's the scenario. Question five gives us, Great. what do we do there? Well, for that, we can unleash the power of cloud run functions. Cloud run functions. They're like tiny automated data ninjas that <laughs> spring into action whenever a new file arrives. I like that. So imagine these functions, they're like watching your cloud storage like hawks. Okay. The moment a new CSV file lands, they snatch it up, process it, and whisk it away to BigQuery. So we're talking real-time data processing without breaking a sweat. Exactly. No manual uploads, no complex scheduling, just seamless integration. That's impressive. It makes you wonder what other data tasks we could automate with this kind of technology. That's a great question, and it brings us to an important point. Okay. We've talked about securing data, speeding things up, and mm. even making data vanish. Right. But what about optimizing the very heart of it, all the queries themselves. The queries, okay. Yeah. So it's like we've these powerful tools, but we gotta make sure we're using them right. Yeah, like even with something like materialized views, you know, a poorly written query can still really slow things down. It's like having a Ferrari, but forgetting to take off the parking brake. Exactly, it's all about making sure those queries are running efficiently, you know, like a well-oiled machine. Okay, so how do we 
actually make our queries more efficient? Like, what are some tips? Well, for starters, think about the data types you're using. Okay. Like using a text T data type when you really just need a yes, no can make a big difference. Right. It's like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Exactly. And then there's wildcards, you know? Yeah, they're great for broad searches, but I can see how overusing them could be a problem. Yeah, it's like trying to find a specific grain of sand on the beach. And I'm guessing unnecessary subqueries are another thing to watch out for. Oh, absolutely. It's like taking the scenic route when a straight path would be much faster. Luckily, BigQuery has some really cool features that can help us analyze query performance, right? It does. It's like having a mechanic under the hood making sure everything's running smoothly. And I feel like I've gained some valuable insights. I'm glad to hear that. Not just into the technical side of things, but also like the mindset and the skills that you need to be successful in this field. Yeah, that's important too. So to everyone listening out there, if you're interested in the power of data, go for it. Dive in. Absolutely. Explore the resources that Google Cloud has, experiment it, and see where your data journey takes you. And remember, there's a whole community out there ready to support you. Yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions, share your knowledge, and collaborate with others. That's how we all learn and grow. It's been awesome exploring this fascinating world with you today. The pleasure was all mine. Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in to The Deep Dive.